Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, also bettingangle.us. Uh, let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, the WBC is trying to save the sport of boxing here. It has ordered Canelo to fight David Benavides if it's if Canelo's going to keep the WBC strap. The problem is, of course, Canelo is into his 30s now. He has more than one belt. Father Time waits for no one. Canelo himself has to realize that Golovkin was hanging around in the later rounds. John Ryder was hanging around in the later rounds. Jaime Munguia uh, closed out John Ryder better than Canelo did. C Canelo might privately understand that Father Time is starting to catch up to him. Now, in an earlier video, I talked about guys who were worthy of fighting Canelo. I'm guessing Canelo has two, maybe three big fights left. Right? We're talking about big fights. We're not talking about payday fights against promising but overmatched opponents. Now, you have some people in boxing who, in my opinion, uh, would give Canelo all he could handle. I've mentioned them in past videos. They include people like David Morrell. They include Janabek. They include Demetrius Andre. Right? Chris Eubank will put his name in. But in terms of legacy, if Canelo wants to leave the stage having given the public legacy-making fights or legacy-affirming fights, because Canelo, as we know, is really already a first ballot Hall of Famer, right? This is just the home stretch of a Hall of Fame career. Let me make the case here that in addition to fighting Benavides, Canelo should consider fighting another all-time great, Terence Crawford, right? I believe the fight is far more interesting than the public does. Let's talk about the dynamic. Let me also say this as diplomatically as possible. I'm a big believer in, let's say, Janabek. I think he's very underrated, right? He's a unified middleweight champion. The problem is the public during John Beck's prime doesn't seem to appreciate him. You have a Vincent Van Gogh problem here where when Van Gogh was alive, the public didn't know who he was. Then it's after he moved on that the public discovered him. Right, beating Janabek at a time when the public is unaware of Janabek isn't really going to shine that much of an extra light on Canelo's career. Right, David Morrell, I think he's a great fighter. I think he has better legs than David Benavides. But here again, the public doesn't give him that status. Because the public hasn't embraced David Morrell like it has Terence Crawford, who universally is viewed as one of the very best pound for pound in the sport. Right? Beating David Morrell isn't going to give Canelo that much extra benefit in terms of his legacy. Terence Crawford is a different situation. Right? Crawford already has big wins over big opponents. Unlike Janabek, unlike David Morrell, unlike even Demetrius Andre, who's had multiple titles, right? Just understand that Terence Crawford is already, like Canelo, a first ballot Hall of Famer. Now I understand there is a shadow on the fight. In fact, there's a couple of shadows, right? 
the first is what happened in the Charlo fight. Right? I'm sure Canelo doesn't want to come across as a weight bully who closed out his career fighting smaller men who ran away from him. Right? The Charlo fight, let's just say it was unfortunate how it turned out. Because Charlo looked like he was in there to survive against Canelo, not to test Canelo. Right? That's the first problem. The second problem is Errol Spence has a rematch clause. Right? Now, Spence recently had eye surgery. Spence got dominated in the first fight. It's not like you watched the first fight and you thought, oh, if this just went Spence's way, maybe this outcome would be different. No, Spence got dropped in the second round of that first fight. Right? There's nothing to indicate that Crawford can't duplicate that performance. Right? The question really is, would Crawford end the night earlier in the rematch? Then he did the first fight. You also didn't get the idea that there's the possibility that Spence could outbox Crawford and win on the scorecards because Crawford was outboxing Spence when he wasn't knocking down Spence. Right? But because of this rematch clause, Crawford would have to deal with Spence legally. In other words, Crawford would have to be prepared to pay Spence step-aside money to make the Canelo fight happen, right? Spence has done what he needs to do to tell the public, hey, I want to fight Crawford in a rematch, even though I believe Spence and Crawford both know that's a bad idea, right? I think that fight, too, the rematch, would be a disappointment at the box office because the first fight was so conclusive. Let me point out too, and this is common in boxing, you have the same problem in the Usyk Fury series of fights that are ahead of us, right? Understand if Fury comes out and dominates, I don't see it happening, but if it were to happen, we all have biases, right? There is the sentiment out there that Fury 6'9 is too big for a former undisputed cruiserweight champion, right? Now, you and I know in real life that's not the case. You have people like Jack Dempsey who feasted on bigger guys, right? Jess Willard, right? Those are the guys who Jack Dempsey feasted on. You understand that smaller guys can have distinct advantages over bigger guys. But understand, in the real world, if the bigger man dominates the little man, if Fury were to come out and knock down Usyk a few times, I believe the demand for the rematch would dry up. I believe the promoters who are contractually obligated to provide us with the rematch would find a way to pay step-aside money. Maybe offer the fighters other opportunities where they could overpay the fighters for fighting beatable opposition. Right? I'm a skeptic. I'm a skeptic on whether that Usyk Fury rematch ever takes place. Understand what happens too. If Usyk comes out and destroys Fury, Understand, that's going to be a major hit to Fury because Fury's last fight had him in a 10-round struggle against a fighter in his first professional boxing match. Not his first match at heavyweight, right? We've had that before. Roy Jones shows up to heavyweight for a fight and wins the title. No, no, his first fight as a professional boxer Understand, if Tyson Fury falls apart against Alexander Usyk, 
and gets knocked down, gets dominated, can't find the slick lefty. If Usyk looks like he's on top of the world, you, the public, are going to want Usyk to fight the winner of Xili Zhang, Joseph Parker, or some young guy, Big Baby, or Andy Ruiz. I think that's a fascinating fight, by the way. Right? Or somebody else, AJ. Right? Or, dare I say, the winner of AJ in Ghana. Right? Maybe Ngannou pulls an upset, and then people will say, this is the man we want in the ring with Usyk. Well, let's talk about Crawford, just boxing-wise, against Canelo. Assuming these shadows, these clouds are able to dissipate. Folks need to realize that Crawford is a southpaw. That brings an entirely different dynamic to the fight. Canelo's best punch, at least from what I see from this seat, Canelo's best punch is the left hook, right? It's the left hook that effectively ends the Kovalev fight. Now, I want people to focus on that Kovalev fight for a moment. Kovalev, veteran boxer, slugger, heavy puncher, right bigger than Canelo in terms of their histories in the ring. Kovalev at the time, light heavyweight champ. Now, aren't you a bit concerned that Kovalev, who had a history of bludgeoning guys, remember the Nathan Cleverly fight, right? The first Andre Ward fight, right? Kovalev, a guy who, against quality opposition, would stand his own and would try to throw big shots. Right? Aren't you concerned that Kovalev comes out against Canelo and seems to be channeling the Canelo Arislandi Lara fight? Why is Kovalev with one of boxing's better trainers in his corner, Buddy McGirt, right, who's now in the corner of Callum Smith? Why is Kovalev out throwing a jab and moving, right? Kovalev's moving more than he does in the Anthony Yard fight. Why is Kovalev's strategy against Canelo to stick and move? And aren't you troubled by the fact that it's somewhat successful? Right, folks, this would be like Gili Zhang deciding to come out and pepper you with the jab and move, right? Be on his toes. Think he can beat you with movement on the balls of his feet rather than his trademark way of beating you, which is blowing you out with power shots, flat-footed. But yet, it seems that the word is out. It seems that even the sluggers understand that to beat Canelo, you need to move a bit. You need to shoot a jab. Don't let knockouts cause amnesia, folks. Understand, Arislandi Lara shoots a jab on Canelo, goes the distance against Canelo. That was a close fight. There's no knockout in that fight. Many people believe Lara did enough to win the fight. Now you have sluggers shooting a jab, moving. In an interview with Marcos Viejas, it's one of the better interviews I've seen in the last 12 months, Lennox Lewis starts talking about what he would do against Canelo. And Lennox Lewis said he would use a Lennox Lewis jab. You have to take Lennox Lewis seriously because that's how he beat David Tua. In other words, Canelo is that guy who people understand. A jab can be effective. There are fights where a jab was effective against Canelo. Throw in the fact that physically, in terms of 
height and reach, not weight. In terms of height and reach, there isn't much difference between Crawford and Canelo. It's not like Crawford's looking up at Sebastian Fundora. Right? Crawford would be looking across at Canelo. Crawford, for those who don't know, and I'm telling you the secret to Crawford, is that he's a different person in every fight. For those who don't know, Crawford can move and throw the jab. Crawford actually has a mobile jab in some fights. Look at the Victor Postal fight, where Postal had Freddie Roach in his corner. I mention Roach because Roach is a master at getting fighters like Miguel Cotto, right, great left hook, to actually move before Cotto would throw the left hook. That Cotto fight, by the way, against Canelo is troubling. Movement bothered Canelo. And that's a younger Canelo. Understand Canelo's a little bit older now. Now, there is a school of thought out there that Tyson Fury's game has degraded a little bit since he's been with Sugar Hill, right? I don't buy it, but understand they're members of Tyson Fury's camp that believe this. Because Fury, ever since the rematch against Deontay Wilder, Fury now has given up his legs a bit and has been throwing power shots from the pocket. Right? Old Fury would dance a little bit more. Right? But New Fury is more throwing long punches, measuring you. Contrast the difference in Fury between the first fight against Deontay Wilder and the second fight against Deontay Wilder. Now, one of the problems with Canelo is that as Canelo gained weight, Canelo's best moments, right, his march through the 168-pound weight class, understand during that march, he's able to get people like Callum Smith on his back foot. He's able to hunt down and stop Rocky Fielding, right? Canelo has lost a little bit of the movement he had. Look at the first Golovkin fight, the back foot that he had when he was fighting at lighter weights. Well, just understand, Terrence Crawford, who can hunt you down, Crawford is one of boxing's premier closers. Right? Just understand that Crawford can also beat you moving laterally. That's the Victor Postal fight. Right? I would argue that that's the American fight. So Crawford, a southpaw, is going to see Canelo's left hook coming. Right? The angles don't match up well. Think about how Ryan Garcia's left hook feared against southpaw Tank Davis, right? Abdul Wahi. Understand a southpaw can see the hook coming, can duck under it. Revisit Oscar De La Hoya against Pernell Whitaker in one of Whitaker's best defensive showings against an elite fighter. Pernell's ducking under the hook. Are you sure that Terrence Crawford would not be prepared to combine movement, his own right jab from a southpaw stance, with an ability to duck under or avoid or block Canelo's left hook? Folks, it's a fascinating fight. Understand, as I make this video, and let's recognize Crawford is older than Canelo. But Crawford, even as an older guy, has the better legs than Canelo. Right, let me say too, I believe Crawford 
with the lateral movement would be able to go to Canelo's body in a way that would negate Canelo's defensive brilliance. Right? You don't want to be caught up trying to hit Canelo in the head when Canelo has excellent head movement. When Canelo can duck down and hide his head. You also don't want to, you know, be tethered to the pocket like Billy Joe Saunders ended up being. So Canelo could hit you with uppercuts. No, you want to fight a more mobile fight. You want to make spacing an issue. You want to force Canelo to lift his feet. And you want to hit Canelo with shots on the shoulders, to the body, right? You want to keep Canelo turning in a way that Ezra Charles kept Rocky Marciano turning. I think a Crawford-Canelo fight would be riveting. More importantly, I believe it would help the legacy of whoever won that fight. Obviously, Crawford beating arguably the biggest name in boxing outside of the heavyweight champ. Everyone here watching this video knows I'm biased, right? There's the heavyweight champ, then there's everyone else. Well, beating the biggest name among everyone else would be quite the feather in Crawford's hat if he pulls it off, right? With Canelo beating arguably the best in the sport pound for pound. Or, let's say, putting a cap on the argument where Canelo could say, hey, I'm the best in the sport pound for pound. I beat Terrence Crawford. Giving Crawford his first loss. And let's understand who gave Canelo his first loss. A guy named Floyd Mayweather. Right? If Canelo gives Crawford his first loss, then that's extra gloss on Canelo's already distinguished first ballot Hall of Fame career. Right? So I think Canelo against Crawford is a spectacular fight. Let's talk about why it should be Canelo's next fight. Don't get me wrong, I have absolutely no, um, you know, hesitation to cheering an announcement that Canelo's fighting Benavides next, right? Benavides is a great fighter. I think that'd be a great fight. Understand Benavides has already held the 168-pound world championship. Um, he just happened to not have it as Canelo marched through the division. Right? That'd be a great fight. I certainly wouldn't complain. If Canelo said, I'm fighting Benavides, I'd say, hey, you know, I, you know, who could complain with that fight? But understand, if Canelo privately realizes that he's slowing down a little bit, right? The Crawford fight has a little bit more room for safety than the Benavides fight. In other words, if Canelo feels that he's getting older, you know what they say in boxing, a boxer can get old overnight, then it would be better for him to fight a guy who doesn't have experience at 168 than to fight a guy who is viewed as a monster at 168 pounds. In other words, if Canelo were to fight Crawford, and if Canelo finds that fight to be tougher than he thought it would be, let's say Canelo loses that fight, then at that point Canelo can walk away from the sport. Right? We would understand that he's not in a position to be as competitive as he would have been a few years ago fighting Crawford. Right? Canelo would have been beaten by a guy coming up from the welterweight division. By contrast, if he fights Benavides and Canelo's game has dipped a little bit, right, that outcome could look really bad, right? I remember cringing watching Ali against Larry Holmes, 
right? Understand what a mistake that was. Larry Holmes had sparred with Ali for years. Larry Holmes today openly admits that he thought he could beat Ali two years before he fought Ali. Right? That fight was a younger, more vibrant guy. Right? You know, letting his older mentor understand, hey, player, father time has caught up with you. And I'm the best in the division. Understand, with Canelo against Crawford, he would be fighting an older fighter who hasn't fought in his weight class. Right? Canelo would have a certain level of ability to structure the terms. It would be fair for Canelo to say, hey, Terrence, I'll fight you, but it has to be in my weight class. Right? I don't think Crawford would have the leverage to say, no, no, Canelo, you need to come down to 160. Right? Canelo could say, hey, I haven't fought at 160 for years. Do you want to fight me or do you want to fight a weight-drained version of me? Canelo wouldn't have that negotiating advantage against Crawford, excuse me, against Benavides. Right? Because Benavides would say, hey, Canelo, I'll fight you at 168. I've been a champ at 168 too. Right? Where would the argument come from for any other weight class to host that fight? Let me point out, too, that boxing does have wrinkles. You understand that that Tim Zhu fight against Keith Thurman is going off not at 154, but at 155. Right? The logic being that Tim Zhu doesn't want to lose his title to Keith Thurman. If Keith Thurman wins, well, Tim Zhu still leaves the ring with his belt, and they can have a rematch. The public would know that Keith Thurman's in play at 154. Right here, if Canelo wants to keep his belts, perhaps they could have the fight at a catchweight. Maybe the WBC strips Canelo if they fight instead at 169. But Canelo would be guaranteed leaving the ring with his other belts. Right? Food for thought. Anyway, that's how I see it. Um, let's just say I'll be disappointed if Canelo doesn't fight one of the guys mentioned in my earlier video, um, you know, Janabag, other guys, uh, or if he doesn't fight Crawford or Benavides in his next match, right? If I'm hearing names like Jamal Charlo, I'm going to be bummed. Right? I do agree with those who say Canelo owes us nothing. Right? I, I do agree with those who say, look, he can cherry pick. I believe Gervonta Davis can cherry pick. Right? At a certain point, a fighter doesn't have to be beholden to his titles. But understand, if Canelo wants to keep his titles... Then he needs a real opponent in his next fight. Right? I'm not, it's professional prize fighting. I'm not going to bemoan a fighter picking to get paydays, right? You know, in his last few fights. Okay, great. You want payday fights? Okay, fine. You want to wait for the right moment? You feel some guys are a little bit too dangerous and aren't going to add a lot to your legacy in terms of the risk of losing to them? Okay, fine. We understand that. Right, But if Canelo wants to be in the running for the best in the sport or stay in the running for consideration as the best in the sport pound for pound, he's either going to have to fight another guy who's in consideration for that, Terrence Crawford, or he's going to have to fight a guy who has a claim on being the best in Canelo's own division, David Benavides. Those are my thoughts this morning. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video, right? Canelo, of course, has other options. If Canelo were to do it old school style, show up for the Beevil Baturbia fight and say, I want the winner of this fight, no one's going to object, that too would give Canelo cover, 
right? Because we understand he has a history with Beevil, right? You know, Canelo could, you know, demand a rematch, right? Say, hey, I'm here at 175. I'm willing to fight you at 175, right? Of course, if Baturbiev were to beat Beevil, a canelo Baturbiev fight, it'd be hard for anyone to complain that Canelo isn't taking on a tough guy when he would be taking on a guy at a higher weight class with an unbeaten record and a 100% KO ratio, right? Canelo has other cards to play. And of course there, if Canelo were to lose to Baturbiev, that's if Baturbiev were to beat Beevil, which I think's a big if, um, then of course Canelo has the alibi of, well, you know, this guy is a 175 pounder. Uh, he's a little bigger than me. You know, I moved up to his weight class, even though, of course, you and I know that Canelo has already held a belt at 175, thanks to his win over Kovalev. Right, so Canelo has cards to play. I just hope he plays the right cards. Either fight a great fighter, right? Either fight a great fighter from a different weight class in a legacy fight, Crawford, right? Or fight a great fighter in a higher weight class. If he wants a payday fight, okay, great. We'll revisit Canelo after he wins that payday fight against lesser competition. Those are my thoughts. I look forward to yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.